today we will be talking about uh, Crisis, and I want to get this out of the way right from the beginning. Ryan, where's your beard? It's gone. Oh my gosh! Since that will be every comment on the video, where's his beard? He He's aware. I, I'm well aware. Because he shaved his own face, so he knows. <laughs> I just want to let everyone know that this episode is sponsored by Crytek. We're really happy that they gave us an opportunity to take a early look at the new Crisis Remastered. And let me tell you, this is a challenging game, but the biggest challenge is getting it to run well on your computer. I thought you were gonna say the biggest challenge is recording these videos with me, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I wanna, yeah, getting it to run on your computer. It was a, uh, it was kinda, it's become sort of a meme. Right. It's, you know, can it run Crisis? That's the thing, if anybody talks about this game, they're gonna say that, you know, can, can your PC run Crisis? So this game came out in 2007, at that point in time, I was shooting a ABGN stuff, I, I was uh, playing NES games. I was the furthest away from playing a game like this. So I have only um, played this game this week. Earlier in the week, I tried out the original game. I played it on Steam. I didn't know anything about it. And um, I actually really enjoyed it. But my first takeaway with the game is how amazing it looked for a game from 2007. And then everybody said, you know, oh, this is the, you know, can it run, can it run crisis thing? And I see, I didn't know anything about that, but looking at the original 2007 version, I was like, wow, like it's really, really impressive for a game from 2007. So I was, I was playing PC games in 2007 and actually we were playing on a card much like this one. This is the NVIDIA 8800 GT that we have on our set. And this is so that's like the card that would have been back then. This is the card that you would play back then, and you know, Crisis was a great game to play back in the day because it really could show off your hardware. So if you had the coolest new computer, you had the best uh, video card. This is like the second or third best of the time. Right. Um, you know, you were doing SLI, which you know Nvidia has kind of gone away from now. They want you to have one really good card rather than a bunch of cards. Um, you would you would play with something like this, I, I think it would be hilarious to boot up the game now and play with this, but <laughs> this is the 8800 GT that's on our set, and it's very indicative of what you would originally play with. I think it's funny, it it, it came with a bunch of, like, gamer uh, aesthetic has changed so much since 2007. This one came with a do not disturb, I'm gaming <laughs> little hanging thing on there. It really shows how things have changed. And then we have some of the original Crisis games here. As far as the high system requirements, does it run Crisis? A big thing, this week the RTX 3080 came out. Big card, ray tracing, significantly increased performance, all of those things. And, you know, this game would be perfect to play on a new 3080 or the 3090 that comes out very soon, which will be even better. Right. Because I was playing on a 2070 Super, which is a great card. And while I was able to experience the 4K mode, the does it run crisis mode, I was able to kind of limp by with it. This is definitely a game that's going to stress your graphics cards as you get better monitors, better graphics cards. And it's, it's gonna be crazy to see the different rigs people come up with to get that 8K mode to really work Isn't out. Isn't this game also available on consoles though? Um, or the, yeah. the original game was? Yeah, the original game was available on so, consoles. So here's, so here's the thing is that you might have to have a very powerful computer to run um, these games. De obviously, you know, that's where the, you know, does it run Crisis? But um, if you don't, you know, there is the console yeah, yeah. versions of it. There is a console well. versions, but it, in the remaster, I want to mention that we're talking about the high, high end, does it run crisis, high mode, 4K, 8K, high resolution. Any computer that has a decent dedicated graphics card, you're going to be able to find a mixture of settings that will allow you to experience the game itself. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's not like it's it's gatekeeping like oh you're never going to be able to play Crisis. And I you're going to be able to play it, but it's also going to allow you to show off the money that you spent on your hardware and all of that. There there are a lot of settings in the options and you're going to just basically want to mess around with them until you come up with whatever setting is good for your own computer. Yeah. So so Crisis it's it's more than a tech demo. It's actually a game. So let's let's talk a little bit about the game itself. Yeah, I had never played the game before, and I have to say that I actually really do enjoy the game. It's like this open world game, and I, I like being able to you know um, 
you know, it just walk anywhere you want. It's, mm-hmm. it's that type of thing. And it's a mixture of, you know, realism, but with uh, science fiction. Like, for example, your character, he can only carry so many guns because they're trying to make it, you know, a little bit more, like, realistic. It's like Halo rules with the guns. But at the same time, you know, then you have aliens in the game. So, yeah. it, you know, it, it's got a mixture. But um, I I found myself having uh, a lot of fun with the game. And um, I'm only, you know, a, a little bit into the game. I haven't played the whole thing yet. But this is something that I actually want to play the entire game uh, on stream uh, myself because I, I want to, you know, I want to see the entire game because, you know, I'm more of a gameplay guy than than a story guy. But the gameplay is was enough for me um, because, you know, it's got like cool guns and, you know, I, I like being able to like use the binoculars and shit and you can use the binoculars and like, you know, see, see where the dudes are and like snipe them and shit. And I just had a lot of fun um, from, from what I played so far with the game. I like the suit. The suit has all these different functions. Like you can you can turn on um, like sort of this cloak thing. And when I first started playing the game, I was like, "Is this gonna be a stealth type game?" And I, at first, I didn't think it was. And you were talking about that, like you didn't think it was. But as I played more of it, I found myself going from you know you turn on the invin- invincibility cloak thing or in- invis- invisibility. Invis- I can't. There speak. is, there is one. There, so there, so there's two. There's yeah. the what, what you're saying invincibility, where basically your energy works as an additional health bar. There's right. The, the armor mode. Right. But then there's also the invisibility mode. I was getting a little tongue tied. Which is the stealth. Mode. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, so the strength, and then there's also speed. I yeah, I mean the the great thing about it is you know on, on this channel I've criticized games that it's just a hallway that you're walking down and you're fighting enemies and stuff like that. Uh, Crisis doesn't have that problem. There's always more than one way to approach an enemy base or an objective. I mean, it's like that's why I like G, like GTA yeah. and shit because you can like go anywhere. It's it's more like that. The other thing is you are fighting like the entire K- Korean army in the beginning of the game and then aliens later. If you're planning on just playing it like Doom where you're just going to try and kill everybody and stand your ground and all of that, that's not how this game's played. It's a combination of stealth and reaching objectives. Those are really the important things. Because if you're just sitting and fighting, and and you're not sniping, but if you're constantly fighting, like you're just going to get overwhelmed. Well, I do like that it's the type of game. It's not enemies are not going to respawn. There's a set amount of enemies, and I like that. Yeah, and, I like and that it, too. So you can go around the island, you can kill every single person, and then that, then that's it. Yeah, and, and I, I like I like that about it. I I think in in addition to the technical elements and the the shooter gameplay, there's also the idea that this is a pretty cinematic story. Like, there's a lot of movies that you could compare this to, and, uh, you know, I think that Crisis could have been a movie. Just the the storyline of, mm-hmm. you know, going to the island, finding the archaeologist people, sure. finding all the things, the aliens, all of that. I, I definitely think that there's, for, for people who are in the story, instead of, you know, you know, just pure shooter gameplay, there's definitely a lot there. And one of the things that really drives the story home is the Harry Gregson Williams score. I mean, he worked on Metal Gear Solid. He worked on The Rock. He worked on tons of Michael Bay movies, that sort of thing. And that's really, you know, the thing that stood out for me in the in-game storytelling was the fact that there's this awesome musical score. The weapons. So, I mean, you, you get like a shotgun. You get like a like an AK, I, I guess. And you get like all these different things. Some some guns are better than other guns. So you quickly find out like what ones you want to have and what ones when, you know, you're like, oh, I'm not going to pick up that gun. I don't really want that gun, you know. And then you have all the different um, like scopes that you can put on that. I, I have a lot of fun like, you know, swapping out the different scopes and putting on the silencers and things like that. So there's a lot of like customization you're going to want to do. Uh, to to your guns and all that's a lot of fun to like screw around with, but uh, there's also uh, several different vehicles you can be different types of like jeeps, um, sort of like these uh, I don't know what they're called, but like uh, bus bus kind of things and um, boats. So you know th- uh, the, there's vehicles that are cool. What I'm curious about is how much the technical development of the game drove the uh, the story elements. Like, for instance, the aliens having the freezing powers. Mm-hmm. I'm really curious if, like... Like, they wanted they were to like, show that off. They are like, so. ice looks cool, yeah. but we're in the Philippines, so how do we do ice? Oh, right. there's ice aliens. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That ma- yeah, that makes yeah, sense. that kind of thing. And, you, you know, having a game that has really great graphics ha- also have open, like, like, valleys and open air and stuff it makes it harder because of the idea 
of in a, in a 3D environment, you want to do a lot of what's called culling. So you only want the geometry that's being shown to be the smallest possible mm -hmm. su subsection of that. So the fact that they said, we're going to make this game look beautiful and we're going to make things far away and have draw distance and all of that is like a double challenge. Yeah. Speaking of things being far away, I got to say so one, one thing. The, I, I don't know if I've ever played a game uh, where the enemy has as good... Um, is as good a shot as in this game because you can be like on the other side of the fucking planet and they're going to shoot you in the head. Like they have yeah. the best aim ever. I, I also want to mention that like I played this game on normal. Um, this is a hard game. If you go to the harder difficulties, those guys are going to be picking you off like like nobody's business. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's really tough game if you want to make it that. There is an easy mode if you just want to experience the story and go through it. I think there's actually hard, and then there's even there's a another above one. that. Yeah, like, I can't is. imagine how hard, hard that gets. So so one thing I do have to say, I got to talk a little bit about the a AI. So like I said, you know, they, they had the best shot ever. You're 10,000 miles away, they're going to shoot you in the head. So there's that. But then on the opposite side, sometimes you, you you're like standing like right behind a dude and they don't know you're there or they might be all like lined up in a group and you're like you think that they're gonna come and like surround you or something and you're standing there and nobody comes and I feel like the I feel like the AI could be a little smarter in this game yeah for sure what one of the most effective things to do is just find a choke point like a doorway or something like that and just wait for them to come yeah and you just shoot them like that that's the one way to make it a little bit easier um my my biggest issue with the AI is when there's enemies in vehicles or enemies in like the machine gun nests and stuff like that. Yeah. They just kind of get stuck. Yeah. And then you can just walk up and get them. Yeah, it's things know, like that. Like that kind of thing. Um, Cause this isn't like a, uh, you know, it's not like a remade game. This is a remaster of it. So I think, you know, since then, I think probably AI has gotten a little smarter in, in games. So it's kind of like taking you back to that. I personally, I have a lot of fun like playing this. So that's not really, it's not really a big deal. It's a little bit yeah, of a Yeah, I mean, I just, like, I just like shooting. Shooting yeah, and going through yeah, it. It's fun. I mean, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Uh, another thing I want to throw out there is, uh, in the menus, uh, there is the option to turn blood on and off. Wouldn't that have been nice back in the day with Mortal Kombat if you could just click a box instead of having like put in the code? But if you want blood in this game, you have to go in the menus and, and like literally turn it on, and that's that's fine. But when you turn it on, it's not. See, I was a little disappointed because it it's not like when you shoot an enemy. Uh, in the chest or something, it's like blood and guts shoot out. It's more like when you get shot, blood is on your like visor, if, I guess. If you're in a game and you're gonna have a blood option, like blood on versus blood off, it better be like, it's fucking blood, man! Yeah. Here it is, it's everywhere, right? Yeah. Because why have like, like, why, why talk it up? It's not like the difference between uh, Doom and like, yeah. Uh, you know, Project Brutality, where it's like crazy fucking blood. Yeah, it's just if, like, you, there's a little splatter of blood. If, if, if you have a blood code, it better be like Time Killers when you turn it on. Yeah, like, so, you yeah. know, that, that there, it could be a little more bloody, you know, for me, but... Um, yeah, yeah. So, so I played this game, I was super nostalgic, got out the 8800 GT, all of that, and I thought to myself, well, you know, we have a Crisis remake. Why can't we have a new Crisis game? There's been so many developments. We have great new graphics cards. We have great new everything. It's time to push the boundaries again. So there's been three Crisis games, and I watched the trailers uh, for the other ones. The third, the third game looks really cool. Yeah. And then there's Warzone, which we, I guess we have sitting there, or yeah. Warhead. I'm sorry. War Warhead is the expansion to the first one. Okay. It's time for Crisis Four. Definitely would love to to see. If they a made new a new one. Crisis, what would it take to get you interested? beyond what you're seeing already? Um, I think that, you know, because we've had the time, the time to look at, you know, you know, it's it sat for a while. I think maybe you do, you do a, an, an alternate universe or like a, like a remake, like more of a, like new telling, like new alien, new thing. Right. I think that this story in Crisis 3 ended. Okay. But the idea of guys in super suits finding out about Right. Aliens, so it kind of be like a reboot, like a reboot type thing. Yeah, I would. I, I think I would really like to see something like that because if if you just do a retelling, it's like we have that. We you have need like a new villain and like yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But but I mean, the idea of like aliens being on Earth for 
millions of years and, and us finding them for the first time. It was interesting. I read an article recently that was talking about like p- potential like life on Venus and like mm-hmm. how alien it would be and stuff like that. Mm. I think like instead of them having like an ice focus or like that's type oh, of thing. Oh, them finding like the microbes on Venus. like Something recently. like that. Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm ready for that. Um, I'm, I'm ready for the, the scar. This is definitely a 2007 game. Because the gun you start with, the scar, mm-hmm. a scar is a real gun. Okay. You know, they used it in Afghanistan and places like that, but that's not a scar. Because I guess they didn't know what it looked like. Oh. Because it was like a spec ops. Because I think some thing. of the other ones are like a fantasy stuff, like the, F, yeah. the F7 or whatever that yeah. other gun is. Like, because I was asking, because I was playing this on stream, because I don't know a lot about like yeah. guns. So I was asking, I was like, is this one real? Is that one real? So some are and some, yeah. some aren't. But for, but for some reason, they called it the Scar, and that's a real gun. Okay. Uh, but. Doesn't look like that. Uh, <laughs> you know? so I thought well, that was oh, so you're saying like today they'd probably be a little, they'd be more accurate. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. Right. Yeah. So this game is available on the Epic Game Store. I want to give a thanks to Crytek for the uh, sponsorship here. We really appreciate it. I actually, honestly, really suggest you go try this game out if you if you never have. I find it to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be streaming it, so you can check that out uh, on my Twitch. Thanks for watching. <laughs>